Um, let's go back to, to uh, history and to imagination and uh, um, imaginative reconstruction. Yeah. We talk about that. Yeah. Uh, uh, how do you begin to talk about, you want to write about history? Where do you start? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, well, what's the relationship between what might call the analytical, uh, you know, waking analytical <coughs> interest of the historian and, um, and the object, uh, which uh, is no longer there? I mean, how do you study an object that's no longer there? As are these events that are in the past. Um, Paul Ricoeur, I cited Ricoeur, uh, third volume of his uh, Time and Narrative, as the place where he's discussing this. And uh, he says, uh, you know, we have to be able to imagine the object before we can construe it as a possible as a possible object of inquiry and analysis. So that what we usually mean by historical reconstruction uh, goes to a phase of prefiguration in which you imagine what the what it must have been like to live in the 17th century. And this constitutes living in the 17th century as an object of uh, possible knowledge that you can then allows you to um, um, uh, to have some model, you might say, or paradigm to allow you to, on the basis of which, by reference to which, uh, you could uh, know when you come upon a 17th century phenomenon. You see. Uh, recognition here would be uh, conformity of a body of materials to some paradigm that had been constructed imaginatively, and I, I used the, uh, I alluded to Kant's notion of the constructive imagination, and uh, to Collingwood's idea of the reconstructive imagination as something like what was intended. Uh, so this would be a way of thinking about the relationship between the imagination on the one side, I mean, if we use faculty psychology terms, what do we mean by the imagination and, the, and historical imagination, historical critical faculty, analytical, historical analytics, historical uh, poetics, 